Hi, I'm Billy Hollowell, and welcome to Answering Atheists, a Pure Talk series brought to you by PureFlix.com. I'm excited to be joined today by Dr. Jason Lyle. How are you? Good. So you are an astrophysicist and a scientist, mm -hmm. and you have a ministry. It's the Biblical Science Institute. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, it's to help uh, people see that science is not antagonistic to the Bible, but in fact, science is based on biblical principles. The reason we can do science is because God upholds the universe in a consistent fashion. And in fact, most of the founding fathers in various disciplines of science were devout Christians. And so there's sort of this common myth today that uh, you know, to, to be scientific is to be anti-Christian or vice versa, <laughs> and the, the ministry exists to, to counter that uh, propaganda. Well, it's interesting because when you interact with atheists um, on Twitter, which is a place I often are, am interacting with them, the first thing will say, well, I don't, I don't believe, you know, your myths. I believe science and a fact. You know, that is the argument. Um, it's a repeated argument. And then it becomes, I think, problematic when people encounter you, uh, you know, an intelligent scientist who is saying, there's no conflict. And so can you expand on that a little bit? Just this notion, they believe there's a conflict between believing in the Bible and science. Why is there not a conflict there? Well, one of the big things is a lot of what is touted to be science isn't. Uh, you know, people will claim, well, you know, the Darwinian idea of, ev of evolution, of microbes eventually becoming people, that's science. No, it's not. It's not testable. It's not repeatable in the present. Now, creation isn't either, but the difference is creation makes science possible. The fact that God created the universe and has instilled order into it and has created patterns for us to discover, uh, that's what science is. It's about uncovering the patterns that God has placed in nature. It's about uh, finding the consistent, repeatable way that God upholds His creation. That's, science is based on that, testability, repeatability. That wouldn't be possible if God uh, didn't uphold the universe in a consistent way for our benefit. He's promised us to do that in places like Genesis 8.22 where he promises the basic seasons, the day and night cycle, the cycles of nature will be in the future as they have been in the past. And so we can rely upon that. But if it's a chance universe, why would you expect any of that? I mean, if it was just, if this was just a big bang, if we're just rearranged pond scum, then why would you expect that one accident could understand another accident? And so the principles of science are predicated on biblical creation. People say, well, I reject myths. Well, you believe in the Big Bang? Yeah, well, that's a myth. I mean, that's a, that's a myth about how the universe came to be. It's not something you can test and repeat in a laboratory. The idea of uh, that something like bacteria eventually evolved into people, that's a myth. It's not something you can repeat in a laboratory. Real science, testable, repeatable, observable science uh, is based on creation and is consistent with it. What barriers, if any, if any, have you hit, you know, in your ministry and in your career, balancing that world, which doesn't, it shouldn't be from a from a Christian perspective, hard to balance, because I think everything you've said is 100% true. As Christians, you know, science explains how God did it, and and you know, we can explore it that way. But what barriers have you encountered trying to, you know, work in that in maybe the secular world and the faith world when it comes to science? Well, I think the, there's there's no intellectual barrier because, as as I've said, uh, science makes sense in the Christian worldview. I think the barriers are that people are not very educated on this issue. Uh, people have this misconception that science is somehow naturalistic or atheistic, and that's sort of the propaganda that, that the naturalists have been pushing, is that to be a scientist you have to, be, you have to believe in naturalism, that nature's all that there is. So alleviating that misconception, I think, is the biggest barrier. And people are not well trained in logic, and that's something that I've kind of, uh, I've realized that uh, the, the, important, uh, the importance of logic in trying to explain things uh, to people, and most people don't know logic. Yeah. And so a big part of the Biblical Science Institute is teaching people logic, how to be rational. Uh, most people are not rational, and I don't mean, I don't mean that to be mean, it's just, it's just true. They don't teach it in schools anymore. And emotions tend to sometimes take over. Absolutely, yeah. People get very heated when you touch their worldview. It, it, it does matter whether or not you believe in God, and it affects the way you live your life. And if you have a particular lifestyle that you like, and God intervenes with that, well, then you, you're motivated. People are motivated to not believe in the biblical God and biblical creation in particular. You know, as a scientist, what what is the, and maybe there's more than one thing, but the most compelling, irrefutable evidence to you that there is a God who, create, who created all of us and created order? Mm. There are so many that are confirmatory of, of biblical creation. The, the fact that you know, our DNA has instructions, you've got three billion base pairs times two sets of DNA, six billion base pairs, that's the instructions to make a U. It's pretty amazing. And it's encoded in a molecule, that's awesome. Or, the, or just the, the, the laws of nature, the fact that the universe obeys laws of nature. But I think the, 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 uh, 
the best one really is just the fact that science knowledge is possible. Uh, because if you think about that, if we're just a chance accident of nature, nature, how could we know anything? Uh, how could we trust that our own intellect is remotely reliable in terms of understanding truth and being able to discern truth from error and so on? Uh, if we're just an accident, it'd be like a magic eight ball. You know those old magic eight balls where you'd shake it up and it'd give you a random answer? <laughs> Wouldn't it be ridiculous to trust in that? Because it's just chance. Now if our brain is like that, it would be ridiculous to trust in any of our own conclusions. But if we're made in the image of God, if we have the capacity to be rational, if God made our senses and made them to be basically reliable, and made the universe and made it to be understandable, then we'd expect, well, yeah, we can, we can know some things because we have a creator. And so I think the fact that knowledge is possible is, is the best argument, really, for God, and, for, and not just any God, the biblical God. Yeah, you know, and th there's a question of proof. You know, atheists will say, well, there's no proof, and you can't prove it, and, and if you have creation and you believe there's a God who created it, well, then who created God? You know, that's always like they try to have this gotcha of who created God, mm -hmm. and obviously, we don't have answers to some of those things, but at the, at the base level, it would seem to me when you look at all of the things, and I'm not a scientist, okay, I'm a trained journalist, that's what I've done, but when you look at reality, plants, life around us, the fact that humans have knowledge to build structures like the ark, um, and, and you take that all into account, the natural logical thing is, well, somebody has to create something. Somebody created that ark, something had to have made all of this. You know, that's like the base to me of logic. Why do so many reject that, though? Well, it interferes with the way they want to live. And you know, I, I would actually say that the Christian faith is provable. A lot of people uh, separate from me on that issue. But uh, you know, in Romans 1.20, God indicates that there is no excuse for disbelief in Him. No excuse. And the way it's worded in Greek is interesting. No, it's anapologia, meaning they have no defense. And that tells me that, that we can know with absolute certainty. Let, let, all, let all the house of Israel know for certain that God had made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. We can know for certain the Christian worldview. People say, oh, but I'm not persuaded. Well, that's, a, that's an entirely different issue. <laughs> just because somebody, you know, just because you're not persuaded doesn't mean that I haven't proven something. I mean, I can prove that E equals MC squared. And most people would not even understand the proof, let alone accept it. But that doesn't mean I haven't proved it. Uh, the Christian worldview is like that. It is objectively provable by virtue of the fact that knowledge would not be possible in any other worldview. It's only if the universe is the way the Bible says it is, if God is the way the Bible says He is, if the human mind is the way the Bible says that our mind is, that knowledge would be possible. So I think it is provable. And then these, these, some of these gotcha questions are very easily answered if you know just a little bit about logic. You know, well, who made God? Well, God is eternal and therefore can't have a creator. Anything that's eternal can't be created because in order to be created, you'd have to not exist at some point and then come into existence. <laughs> and so that's not the case with God. He's eternal. And you say, well, that bothers me. Well, that's your problem, right? <laughs> Just even because, if it bothers you at the yeah. base, before you even go there, you would have to say, well, something created all of this. Where the, sure. uh, the because sun, Because this universe the stars, has a beginning. All, right. Yeah. And, and so much of what happens is so patterned, as you were saying, yeah. it's so patterned. If one little thing was off just a little bit, you know, we would die. I mean, there'd be yeah. no way that any that Earth could even survive or sustain right. life. So to look at all of that and to walk away and to start going, well, who created God? Well, wait a minute. No, you have to at least say something created all of this. I mean, that to me, it's almost the definition of insanity to deny that. Um, but you have these conversations with people, and, and I think sure. it's, as you were saying, some people, they want to live life the way they want to live it. And, yeah. And it may be subconscious even that they're not sure. even realizing. But, you know, we also live now in this era of moral relativism where there's, I mean, even basic things that were never questioned are now being questioned. And so with that in mind, it seems like a more difficult era for Christians to exist in, especially if we're not equipped with knowledge and understanding. What What's your recommendation for Christians who might be watching this who they get intimidated when they're talking to a scientist or they, they're not sure what to say? What, what would you do to equip them or say to equip them? Well, that's the whole purpose of, of our ministry. The Biblical Science Institute is designed exactly for that reason, uh, to equip people. And so check out our website, biblicalscienceinstitute.com. Uh, we have free articles on the website that, that will equip uh, people to, to think better, to be able to defend the faith better. Uh, that's, that's the point of it. That's what we're all about. Uh, in general, just, just knowing a little bit about the basics of science I think is very helpful knowing a little bit about genetics, a little bit about fossils, because all those things confirm creation and, and a worldwide flood. They confirm biblical history. And knowing a bit about logic, and, and then ultimately the recognition that knowledge would not be possible apart from the biblical God. I know that's a different kind of an argument and people are not used to it, but nonetheless, I think it's bulletproof. I have, I have had no one be able to refute 
that argument and say, yes, there's this other worldview that makes knowledge possible. No, there isn't. Knowledge begins with God. Proverbs 1-7 uh, indicates that. And, and so uh, that, that is a powerful argument. Uh, I learned a lot of this stuff from Dr. Greg Bonson. He's with the Lord now, but he, he, uh, anything by Greg Bonson, is, he was a wonderful Christian apologist of the 20th century. And I'd encourage people to read his stuff as well. Can you talk a little bit about natural selection, your take on it, describe it for people? Because I think when we start moving into these areas, again, people don't know, and, and not sure. knowing, it makes you take a step back, and then there's no engagement or discussion. So yeah. take us through that. Yeah, it's actually, it's a biblical principle. It's, it was uh, written about by Edward Blythe, who was a creationist. A lot of people think Darwin came up with natural selection. He did not. He might have, he might have coined the term, but uh, the process of the fact that organisms that are well suited to their environment tend to survive better than those organisms that are less suited to their environment. Yeah, that's true, right? You can, and you can observe that. Right, I mean, right, there are exactly. you know, certain plants that will only grow in certain environments, and lo and behold, those are the plants that grow there. Uh, it's not surprising. Uh, what Darwin did was he tried to convince people that uh, he tried to tie natural selection to evolution. And, uh, and it was a clever trick because you, you take something that's true and observably true and you tie it to something that's false that you want to persuade people of. And uh, it, it works. A lot of people have been drawn into believing in evolution because they've seen the obvious truth of natural selection. And uh, very, very occasionally a Christian will do the opposite. They'll reject natural selection because they think it's the same as evolution. It's not. And uh, that's unfortunate that some, that some creationists have fallen for Darwin's trap, you might say. But no, it's, it's a creationist principle. Uh, it's something that's mentioned in the Bible. The fact that the organisms that survived the flood either had to be on the ark or they had to be well suited to their environment. That's an example of natural selection right there. All the land animals that were not on the ark died off during the flood year. That's an example of natural selection in action. So it's just, it's just a principle of nature that is true in a, in a fallen world. Organisms die if they're not well suited to their environment. We'd expect that that causes organisms to adapt in some sense, in the sense that if they're not already adjusted to that environment, they tend to die. And so we find that organisms are well suited to their environment. If they're not, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be there. Now, we, we've touched on this a little bit, but the secret code of creation, something you've spoken on, can you take us through that? Yeah, it, this is something that I, I, I read about years ago, and it, it just fascinated me, the fact that there is a, a, um, a sort of a, a beautiful pattern built into numbers and you know how do you what, how do you make sense of that? I mean, if you discovered a code in a book or something, you'd say, well, wow, somebody really intelligent encoded that information in the book. What happens if you find a secret code in numbers? You'd say, wow, somebody encoded. Wait a minute, who made numbers? Well, God made numbers. I mean, we didn't make them. We we came up with the notation in terms of that means one and that means two, and they're you know different notations. The Romans have their own notation and so on. Uh, but there is a there is a code built into numbers. It was discovered in the 1980s when uh, mathematicians started running uh, uh, what, are, what are called alg recursive algorithms, where you, you plug a number into a formula, you get a new number, you plug it back in, you get a new number, you plug it back in, and it'll either run off to infinity or it'll, or it'll stay kind of small. And if you make plots of which numbers belong to certain sets, you get these amazing shapes. One of the first ones that was discovered is called the Mandelbrot set, after its discoverer, Benoit Mandelbrot, who worked for IBM. And it was in, only in the 1980s that computers were fast enough to be able to start plotting these things. And when you zoom in on this shape, it's, it's unbelievably beautiful. And you get these incredible, um, intricate and beautiful patterns. It's artwork of God built into numbers. It's existed s since creation, and yet it was only discovered in the 1980s when computers were fast enough to uh, be able to see it. And so I think the implications of this are, well, it makes sense in the Christian worldview because we have a creator of numbers. God, God's mind is the source of numbers. You can't explain it by an evolutionary mechanism because numbers don't evolve, right? It's not like seven used to be three, but then right. it didn't evolve, right? right? There's only there's only a creation worldview when it comes to numbers, and so you, there's no there's no secular or evolutionary explanation. It only makes sense in the Christian worldview. It gives us a little window into the mind of God. And I've never actually thought about that. I've never thought about numbers. That's that's fascinating. Everything else you you know we can mm -hmm. debate and discuss. There are changes. Things move and progress, but numbers are numbers. They're set. Yeah. They, they've been there and they are what they are. And the laws that govern them as right. well. I mean, you know, Pythagorean theorem's always been true and even before it was discovered and so on. Well, these people say, well, well, human beings created math. No, we discovered math and we discovered laws of math. If we created it, we could create it differently, right? We could create different laws, but no, that's not the way it works. There are certain mathematical truths that are simply true and they're discovered. And uh, th that makes sense in light of the fact that God's mind is responsible for laws of mathematics. Mathematics is the way God thinks about numbers. 
And so when you study math, you're actually doing theology. You're, you're, you're learning something about how God thinks. And so when, the, uh, when they started plotting these Mandelbrot sets and, and zooming in on various aspects of it, it's unbelievably beautiful. And you see the artistic side of God as well as the intellect. Uh, it's, it's absolutely astonishing. And it's infinitely complex. You can zoom in on these things forever, which is also amazing because that tells us that God's mind is infinite, which we knew from Scripture. But nonetheless, uh, wow, what a mind the Lord has. And we're just getting a little glimpse of it today. And continuing to learn more as time, as time yeah. goes on. You, this is a little bit of a different direction here, but I wanted to ask about your your background. You know, what was it for you? And maybe if you want to talk a little bit about your faith journey, but that led you in the direction of of science and faith. I, I've always enjoyed science, and I was uh, very blessed to be raised in a in a Christian home. And you know, some people <laughs> commit the circumstantial ad hominem fallacy, right? They'll say, "Well, you're just a Christian because you were raised in a Christian family." That's another one. Yeah, that's yeah, another crit right. atheist critique right. I get all the time. Yeah. And of course, I could counter by saying, "Well, you just you just believe in the multiplication table because you learned it in school." <laughs> well, I mean, that's true, right? But nonetheless, I have some really good reasons to believe right. in the multiplication table. Right. And likewise, I have really good reasons to continue to believe in the, in the Christian system, the fact that it makes knowledge possible for one. So, so yes, I was raised in a Christian family. I was raised in the church. I had every reason to believe that the Bible is true from the beginning. I have, I've never encountered any reason to doubt that, as I've studied various aspects of science. But I've always enjoyed science. It's just something that I think the Lord's placed within me just an interest to uh, understand the how the universe works, uh, astronomy in particular, but I love all branches of science, biology, geology, it's all fascinating to me. And uh, for, for me too, it's, it tells us something about the mind of God. And so as a, as a Christian, I look at science from that perspective. I'm studying something about God and His mind and the way He thinks and the way He creates. So it was uh, only natural that I should go into a ministry that's uh, that's si a lot of science, but it's from a Christian worldview. And the last question I have for you is just, what is it that keeps you going in ministry? Because I would imagine, outside of the passion, seeing that come to fruition, seeing the work come to fruition, so what is it that, that kind of keeps you moving in a positive direction? Well, in this ministry, it's, it, it's, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a neat ministry to be a part of, really. Um, the thing that really encourages me is when I see other Christians get encouraged. Uh, I, I've had a lot of folks that have said, wow, you know, I, I listened to your presentations, I've read your books. It really strengthened my faith. It really got me excited about being a Christian. I've had other folks who've said, I used to be an atheist. I read your book, Ultimate Proof of Creation. I'm, I'm a Christian now. Praise God. That's awesome. So you, you're actually hearing stories of people who have gone from here to, to here. Yeah. And everywhere in between. Some people say, you know, I was, I was kind of a Christian, but I, I wasn't attending church. Your book got me back into church. Praise getting God. people to think, Praise getting God. people to think deeper about wherever yeah. it is they are, to move in that direction. Yeah. That's the goal. And it's, you know, it's ultimately the Holy Spirit that, that draws people to Himself. But nonetheless, it's God uses us sometimes to get the, to get the information out there. What an honor. Yeah, that's what keeps me going. That's, that's why I do what I do. I want people to be saved. I want people to be, and people who are already saved, to be uh, even more excited about their faith and to love God even more. Uh, that's what keeps me going. Where can people go again for more information on your ministry? You can check us out on the web, biblicalsciencestitute.com. And there's lots of resources on that website. We have a little uh, uh, bookstore there too where they can get some of, the, some of the books and some of the DVDs that we produce. But the articles on the website are free, and so uh, I'd encourage people to check that out. Well, thanks so much. I really appreciate Pleasure. you coming down today. Thank you. Everyone else, thank you for tuning in. If you want more daily uplifting content, you can go to pureflix.com and facebook.com backslash pureflix. With over 10,000 titles, it would be impossible for us to show you everything on pureflix.com. But let's give it a shot.